I see that um, it has been curated to tell a, st a certain storyline. And every storyteller, every videographer or every director has an a agenda mm -hmm. before they mm -hmm. go into making a documentary. Mm -hmm. Therefore, whichever agenda BBC had was the guiding principles of the type of people they selected and of the of the the type of hero or heroes they decided to project mm -hmm. so i see is that the they have curated the whole the whole video or documentary to project reggie rockstone mm -hmm. you know it, mm -hmm. there's no doubt mm -hmm. and they found younger people who have been influenced by mm -hmm. hip life and reggie rockstone mm -hmm. to to tell the story from a young pers person's perspective i also see a, a business angle where they take Kwame Eugene Kiddy and young people, manifest, you know. like, people who are known outside Ghana, so that when BBC broadcast, their relevance will be felt wherever Kwame Eugene and Kiddy are felt from India to mm. Puerto Rico. Mm. So they looked at the business angle as well. But I think the whole hip life story cannot be bottled into a 30 minutes documentary. So they must make a first one, which if they have chosen Reggie, as the head of hip life, there's no question about that. So they must make a first one and inspire you and I to continue the story. Mm. So I, I, I think they've done a brilliant thing. Mm. It is for Reggie to be on BBC with Kwame Eugene Kiddy and Manifest mm -hmm. is better for Ghana than when there was no hip life documentary. Mm. But is it not is it not also um, a disservice to us that we have not been able to tell our story properly, that somebody is telling it to suit their taste. And so it's not a disservice, it's a lesson to you. It's a, it's a, it, it, they are talking to you. Mm. See, this is what Africans have been doing every time. We are waiting for the Hollywood to come and shoot the Tarzan story. Mm -hmm. Again, we're white boys swinging in the trees, and then mm. we are complaining. Mm. We sit down for them to take the Anansi story, and they do uh, Spider-Man. Spider -Man. And then we complain. What is stopping us? We have cameras, we have storytellers. What is stopping us from making our own hip life documentary? Go fast, the last, the no, last, but I, I want to ask the last, the last one. Before, we yeah, <laughs> yes, because I was going to say that. Haven't we tried in this country? And Achami, I'm sure that you know that we have. I've, I've been on that, platforms where they've tried to tell the hip life story. And what happened was the fight and the bicker or the bickering over. Uh, yeah. It is not this person who originated I it. I remember so very well. Yes, I remember very well when I used to be at the multimedia group that Hits of M took upon itself to tell the story. I remember Andy Dusty and they said, oh, don't give it to Reggie. Zap has to be involved. This person has to be involved. We can't give the credit to this person. At a point, it was so much of a confusion First, yeah. that even we, those who were trying to follow the story, had distorted, you know, information. So it didn't but, make any... But that is natural. See, when I show you my hand, mm -hmm. if I show you the back of my hand, you can only see the back of my hand. Mm -hmm. You don't see the palm. Mm -hmm. yes, I, so I am looking at hip life from Kumasi. Mm. You know, four hours drive away from Accra and what native phone clothes are doing, what Reggie is doing, what uh, everyone else is doing. I didn't see it. Mm. And same way, people in uh, Accra did not see what we were doing. I started mm. rapping in 1991. Mm. I've done three raps five years before Reggie released his thing. But I didn't call it hip life. Okay. Therefore... We need to, if he called it hip life, we need to give him that. We, I don't think we need to fight over who gave the nomenclature. <clears throat> the issue is that storytellers in Kumasi must tell the hip life story from Kumasi. People, in, it, might, it might be told about myself, Lord Kenya, and everybody else, that like Kaboom and every, we need to tell that story. People in Takwa, they must tell the story for, with Sasquad, TH for Kwajis, ending up with uh, Kofi Kenata. And then people in Accra must tell their time, people must tell their story. Yeah, Nafti is there to pro to produce storytellers who have now you can use just a phone mm -hmm. and a good audio device to tell your story from your own perspective. I don't think we need to fight over perspectives because nobody has 360 view. It we all see subjectively. Yeah, mm -hmm. You said something very important that I want to go back on. Um, for me, in 1991, I mean, I never even fathomed or think, thought about um, uh, a rap in, uh, in vernacular or in any mm. local language. Mm. It had never crossed my mind. All I knew rap was English. Mm. You know, but you mentioned that you were, you were, you were doing this... Not, not just me, myself, 
Lord Kenya, Swazi B, Sassi Park, Tebo B, uh, Lota. Mm. It was a whole movement. As far back as 91. As far back as 91. What was wow. the reception that, like? It was a, it was a thing. That is why, okay, that is why when hip life became popular, Kumasi took over. Because we had been rehearsing. <laughs> okay. Where were, you, where were you practicing this or where were you doing it? Is it schools or? In, in schools. Okay. So in 1991, I completed my O levels in 93. So in 1991, I was in Form 4. Mm. And so I was representing, I was in the same class with Lord Kenya. I was representing my school, Kumasi Anglican. And then people from Konongo, Dumasi, that's where Swazi B was. Okay. People from Prempe, we would meet at the Golden Tulip, at what's called City Hotel, mm. at least once every month for a rap battle. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You know, for a rap battle. And so, and I know that different things were going on in Accra. The mm -hmm. other B boys in East Legon, Kwekuti, mm -hmm. and all they're also doing their thing. And mm -hmm. they released their songs um, way back. Way back, way back. Uh, two years before Hip Life. But they didn't call it Hip Life. We didn't call it Hip Life. I remember Ochami Kofi in 1994 when we decided to become musicians. We were calling our, our music Afme Osibi or Rap Osibi. Wow. What was that? <laughs> because, <laughs> yes, because we were taking inspiration from Osibisa and trying to add rap to it. So if we had broken out first and mm. we had developed the concept of rap Osibi, would it be fair for someone to come from Tema to come and say that they created it? No. If Reggie and uh, Abraham Ohinijan and uh, uh, Zap Mallet and Rap Rap and all those people created hip life, we need to give it to them. I don't think that we need to fight over the, the name. All of us must come to a point that every human being is not God. We all see subjectively. No one sees objectively. You can't mm. have 360. Therefore, however someone tells a story, that is their, their way of expressing it. We should mm. not fight over mm. how BBC is, is selling a BBC agenda. You think BBC cares about Ghana? They don't. Uh, there's a song that we did. Damn, I've got it. Because I am where Link's uh, all star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lynx. yeah. Where on the on 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 my in my rap, I say that um, beating me is as rare as find a happy African chilling on BBC. That is how difficult it is to find mm. happy Africans on BBC. <laughs> you know. Mm. So they tell their story their way. They tell the story the British way, so that they will sell the British story. Why are we here in Ghana fighting over it? Mm. Why? Mm. 